Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to talk about how to stop rushing, add dynamics, and more on command during piano performance. So these are really some of the most common issues that piano students might face, and I might face them as well too if I'm not careful. So typically the student will start playing, it's normal, everything is going well, and then they just start taking off if the issue is rushing. And I'll be like, like whoa, that's really fast, like, I've never heard them play so quickly before. And then afterwards, probably we're in the context of a lesson, I'd ask them about it. And I'd say like, you know, you were playing so fast, like so much faster than normal. And they would say like, oh, I know David, but I just couldn't stop once I started playing quickly. Like I couldn't make myself go back to normal speed. Same thing might happen with dynamics. So the person's playing on their own and it's very musical, but then in front of me, because they're nervous, they would say like, that they just couldn't play with the louds and softs. They started to go into like a survival mode where it was just all the same. And even though they wanted to put back in the louds and softs, they couldn't. So the overall point of this video is to say that running simulations of these issues, like purposely making yourself rush and then going back to normal, purposely making yourself play with no dynamics and then going back to normal louds and softs, running these simulations can have a very powerful outsized impact in terms of your ability to actually do it in a real situation. And on this channel, I hope to share with you guys strategies, thoughts, insights, methods, etc., often of my own creation, that I hope will help you in your piano playing, hopefully other areas of your life as well. So kind of already talked about the overall point of this, this video. I, I had another kind of related video that came out, I think last week, because usually I record these kind of all in a bunch and then they just come out week to week, called Simulating Errors to Keep Going No Matter What in Piano Performance. This was more around if you missed notes. So it's like purposely missing notes in either or both of the hands and then being able to continue going onward no matter what. This video is more about simulating even broad concepts. So if rushing is your issue, then practice doing that on purpose and then going back to normal, even when you're under no pressure. If dynamics is your issue, practice playing with no dynamics at all and then going back to your normal, hopefully beautifully, you know, contrasted louds and softs in terms of your levels, your uh, the balance between your hands, the shaping up and down, you know, whatever it may be, practice going back to normal with that. And there could be other things too. If you have issues with articulation, like the short, which notes are detached, which notes are connected. If you have issues with like polyrhythms, any number of things, practice doing it incorrectly. <laughs> Practice doing the very thing that you're afraid of, obviously not all the time, but in addition to your regular performance practice, your regular, you know, normal practice and everything, then as part of your performance training on your own, practice doing the exact thing that plagues you during performance and then being able to go back to normal. When you're under no pressure, it should be a lot easier to do this. I will say broadly, you know, I'll talk about some other resources at the end of this video as well. But if you're on your own and, for example, you have trouble even doing what I had just said in terms of like purposely rushing and then going back to normal, my playlists such as my performance practice playlist, logical methodology, maybe even particularly physical methodology, these are examples of broad collections of strategies that can really, really help your ability to do this. But for most students, and I've taught many students over the years, they will on average, like even just the idea of this strategy, it does seem to have often an immediate and outsized return just because they hadn't even thought of practicing it before. So for instance, if you're on your own, you don't normally rush when you're not nervous, you're just playing normally, then you play in front of the teacher or you play in front of an audience and then, you know, your heart's going fast, adrenaline's going, you're, you're playing faster or you're rushing. I mean, it's, it might be one of the few times you're even encountering that scenario. So your body isn't prepared for it, your mind, your emotions, you're not prepared for it. So you're often so surprised, you're like kind of blindsided by it. You don't even know how to react, let alone that you have any kind of specific strategy to deal with it. But if you put in your mindful spaced repetitions here, even in terms of performance training, like on your own, you purposely try rushing, then playing normal, like rushing, then playing normal, even when you're under no pressure, well, you will, first of all, you'll have literally done it. And then psychologically, you will have more confidence because if that happens in the real performance, you'll be like, oh, I've already seen this before. I've already seen this happen before. 
you'll have more confidence that you can slow down. And then hopefully because you've put in your reps, your body will then follow what your mind is saying. So you're rushing. And then even when you're in a real performance, you'll then be able to tell yourself, hey, just play normal now. And you'll be able to do it because you've practiced doing it when you're on your own. Now, if it's nervousness and other things like a faster heart rate itself that's impacting you, you can simulate that too. You can do 25, 30 jumping jacks or any other kind of like more higher intensity cardio, get your heart rate up and then try this exercise. For instance, with rushing, like playing too fast and then going back to normal, even while your heart rate is elevated or any of these other factors that we might talk about. So yeah, I think I will try to go through some examples here. And I mean, it's pretty much just an illustration of what I'd already said. Really quick examples. I don't want to draw this out too much. So whether it's a more beginner or more advanced student, let's say that they start fear release and they're playing too fast. Okay, and then they can't slow down, like I was saying, like a runaway train. So I'll say, hey, why don't you try playing too fast and then go back to normal? And then they should experiment with that. And of course they could try it again. So purposely try playing too quickly or rushing for a little bit and then go back to your regularly scheduled program. If that starts to become easier, then you can start doing the elevated heart rate thing I mentioned earlier or other. There's definitely other ideas under my performance or performance training, whatever it's called, playlist where you can put yourself through other scenarios. But even just the act of trying this, hopefully you'll find that it really helps because it's helped many of my students. Same thing for a more advanced student. If they're playing like Winter Wind A2, for instance, even if they use like my metronome, cycling all out with accents like my other physical methodology uh, ideas or logical methodology ideas they might still try to just play like as fast as they can or at a faster metronome speed than they can really manage so it's still the same thing they might play too fast like and then i'll tell them to slow down so they might go <laughs> Well, maybe that's enough of an, of an example. Uh, I'll, I'll actually, I'll exaggerate even more. Let's see. So sometimes if you exaggerate even more, it'll be even easier to really have that tool in your toolbox when the real situation comes up. So if you rush like a huge amount and then you go back to normal, well, hopefully you'll find it's even easier in comparison if you rush just a little and you're like, well, I was able to on command play way too fast and then go right back to normal. So like when I'm rushing just a little bit, it's like a walk in the park to then go back to normal from there. And of course you can have variations on this. You could rush a little, you could rush a lot, you could try it in all different areas of your piece, whether it's the beginning or the most difficult part, or of course, which parts actually rushed when you performed in a real situation. So I would also recommend recording yourself regularly and recording yourself when you perform in challenging situations and or under challenging conditions, including in lessons or otherwise. Same thing with no dynamics. If you have trouble with dynamics, well, same thing I'd say to students, try starting with no dynamics or playing session with no dynamics and then on command going back to having dynamics again. <laughs> Same thing with uh, Winter Wind Etude. Let's see if I can simulate it. No dynamics, and then hopefully I can then play with some dynamics again. Okay, so I was able to then come down uh, at a moment's notice there. And I think you can go back and forth also. I forget if I said that already, but you can play like a few measures with the dynamics and then a few measures without and then a few measures with two measures without so you're training yourself whenever you want to to be able to like flip a switch 
So it, like in general, if it's out of control, like let's say I'm playing a revolutionary, let's say it's out of control. reset that might seem far-fetched to be able to do that but it's only because most people have never even considered practicing it and I forget if I said earlier in this video but I haven't heard this strategy so much talked about at least that I've seen maybe it is on other channels but I find it's been truly one of the most practical ones for both me and for my students so um, and it makes sense right it's like why would you not practice the exact thing that was plaguing you so that you know how to deal with it, you know how to get out of it. You don't want to be fooled by the same trick twice, not only with notes, but even with entire concepts such as playing too quickly or having no dynamics or having no control over your articulation, etc. Let's see, am I missing anything here? Well, let me bring you guys back over here. So I think it's really important in terms of mindset to not just resign yourself to a bad performance, if at all possible. And this is like this whole like survival mode idea where you start and then it's like faster than normal. Or it's way worse than normal. And then you're just like, this is just going to be a bad performance. Like you've decided it. And because you've decided it, it turns out exactly as you've thought. You don't give yourself a chance to salvage it. Why? If, if the piece is 200 measures long and then a measure like 67 or like, you know, 83 or something, you're just like, this is just a bad performance. Why does it have to be? So you can't give up or you can, but I don't recommend it. You can't give up internally because otherwise like these, this strategy won't work at all. You're not going to have the willpower, the emotional bandwidth to, to utilize this. Or even if you use this strategy in a real performance, you still feel so bad that you're just like, ah, like I'm just, it, it's fine. Like I'm just going to get to the end and that's it. I'm gonna draw a life analogy here. I like, let's say that it's Monday morning and then something bad has happened at work or with family or whatever it may be. And it's like 11, 13 in the morning or it's, um, you know, 1, 37 in the afternoon. I'm just trying to make this like really real. And this bad thing has happened. And then how often do you decide like, this is just, this is just a bad day. There's still so much of the day left. You can reset at any point. And that's really what I think that this strategy is. So things aren't going so well, but then you just practice just flipping that switch. And it could even be on your own happiness, possibly, because we're the ones that decide, you know, what's going on in our respective universes. So some people don't just give up on a day. They give up on the whole week or the whole year even. And I would love for anybody that's watching this to not do that, if at all possible. There's no reason why this, and it's not just, this isn't just meant to be like, an empty like motivational speech or something it's very very relevant and practical in terms of performance so these tools will give you the ability if you want to to flip that switch but it does start from the internal part of not giving up realizing that you can like reset the performance at any point and then this will give you the practical you know physical ability also to then execute hopefully and in terms of additional resources. I do have this performance playlist that I'm a little slow to update sometimes, sorry, but uh, I think it will at least have what to think to yourself before performing piano, how to perform for anyone, anywhere, anytime, and performance etiquette part two, fake through mistakes and always keep going. The video that just came out recently, simulating errors to keep going no matter what in piano performance. I think all of these things will help with the title of this video, like how to stop rushing and dynamics and more on command, like it'll give more nuance to the context of this video, because in my teaching philosophy and everything, it is very much about layering everything you learn in this video with other concepts and combining them together in artistic, strategic ways. And I think I mentioned earlier, but like literally all the playlists on my channel, and I'm sure that there's videos that are not in the playlists, mental practice, performance practice, logical methodology, physical methodology, logistical methodology, etc. These will all help in different ways. They're different angles, different facets. Um, so I really believe in this interrelatedness of all things and these nuanced connections between things. So if there's anything about this exercise that you find tricky, I would start 
branching out. So if, just as like one or two like really quick examples, if you go to the performance training plays and you start watching things like, you know, what to think of yourself before performing piano, how to perform for anyone, anywhere, anytime, you might then gain the ability to much better simulate the rushing and then go back to normal, simulate having no dynamics and then going back to normal, for instance. Or if you watch my mindset playlist, which is like kind of more ideas in terms of changing your entire thought process and, and state of being, that might alter your insides, your emotional part and your mental part enough that you'll be able to execute this exercise more easily. Or maybe my physical methodology playlist, if you do that all out with accent touch, it will physically give you the ability to be able to rein it in and stop rushing or be able to add dynamics. So don't give up if you're not immediately able to do this exercise in the video. I do find that you'll probably at least be able to do it somewhat and hopefully you'll find it immediately effective. But even if not, start combining and being creative with other concepts. Anyway, hope this helps. Please let people know about the channel. Like and subscribe if you found this valuable. And looking forward to the next one.